Hey, this is Kyle with Pure Storage, and today we're going to walk you through using VVols as principal storage with fiber channel um, on the Pure Storage Flash Array with VMware Cloud Foundation version 4.1. Um, we're really excited about this new feature because really it brings VVols a lot more into the forefront of using it with VCF. Um, and this is the overall process that we're going to show you in today's technical demo. Um, adding VASA to SDDC Manager, attaching a protocol endpoint to a host group, and then commissioning a workload domain as you normally would with a little cleanup at the end. Um, so to start, we're in SDDC Manager, and the first thing we're going to do is actually add a VASA provider uh, from a pure storage fiber channel flash array uh, to SDDC Manager. This is something that's brand new, is of uh, SDDC Manager 4.1. Um, so what we're grabbing here is the management IP address from our uh, test array. We'll go ahead and pop it in here. And what's really important with VASA is that you have to use port 8084, um, which you'll see I'm gonna add in here, um, along with that version.xml. Um, we'll have a KB article with all of this information as well for you to reference uh, alongside of this video. Um, we'll give it a descriptive name, in this case, uh, controller zero of our flash array. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do on the array for this step is create a uh, pure VVols user. Uh, we recommend creating a separate user for uh, VVols and VASA management. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that created. Pure VVols is the name. And then under this, and then we'll use that username uh, specifically for VASA registration. We'll give it this container name, VVOL container, that is required for this version. Uh, and then we'll, last but not least, we will select our container type, which is fiber channel. Um, with that, we'll save it. We can see this VASA provider has been added. Um, and then the next step is to actually attach the pure storage protocol endpoint to the underlying hosts. So we've got three hosts that we've got all set up for use with fiber channel here. Um, we've already created the host group, but now I'm actually gonna attach the protocol endpoint. Um, this is one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is to go over to the volumes tab, go to volumes, uh, show protocol endpoints, then you can click into the protocol endpoint here um, and then this, this is where we will connect it to that host group that we will be using for our workload domain. All right, so now we can go back. Just a quick confirmation that our protocol endpoint is attached, and it is. This is important. This is a requirement for, for doing uh, this, this uh, host commissioning. Okay, so now we're gonna actually commission those three hosts. Um, Again, something new in VCF 4.1 is this VVOL storage type option. We'll select fiber channel. Um, we only need vMotion only for fiber channel, and then we'll provide root credentials to that ESXi host. And we'll go ahead and add it. Um, I'm gonna skip here and then add the other two hosts just because this process is uh, needs to be repeated. Um, all three hosts are there. Now we'll go ahead and get them validated. Again, I'm skipping ahead a little bit here just in the interest of keeping this demo uh, manageable in terms of time. Uh, and then we'll, as we can see, storage type is VVOL. And now we're going to go ahead and commission uh, our three new hosts. Um, we can see here, here they are, all assigned, or all unassigned, excuse me, um, but ready for use in our workload domain. Uh, most VCF users are, will be familiar with the next couple screens. We do see VVOL is a new storage selection here on the first wizard, um, but I will go through this a little faster, just in the interest again of saving time. Um, input our cluster name. Um, I've already pre-populated DNS entries for uh, vCenter as well as NSXT. So we'll go through these quickly. Um, and then of course, we've got our host overlay network as well. And something nice that they've added here is that IP addresses are automatically picked up. So you don't have to input those anymore. Okay, so for VVOL storage, again, we'll select fiber channel as our protocol type. Um, that's the VASA provider we registered, the VVOL container that we registered, our VASA username, and then we'll give the VVOL data store a descriptive name as well here. Um, then our, our three hosts match up with that VVOL storage profile. I'll skip here so I don't show you my licenses. Um, and then as we can see, object names, and then finally we can to get to the summary screen and review everything as, as we expect it to be. We've got our three hosts there. And then again, our, our VVOL storage information is available for review here as well. So then we click finish and that will kick off our workload domain deployment um, with a brand new NSXT instance. This typically takes about an hour. So again, I will be skipping and pausing here and there, but something I wanted to show real quick. So we can see there are a couple of new uh, workflow components for, for the workload domain 
uh, that are important for VVOLs, of course, registering VASA, and then as well as creating the actual VVOL data store itself. Um, skipping ahead, we can see that our vCenter instance has been deployed for this workload domain. And here we can see it's actually creating the virtual volume data store. Um, if we synchronize storage providers, we can see that the VASA provider that we put into SDDC Manager has appeared here. Um, there's our 8084 uh, version XML. Um, and then if we actually go over here, we can see the VVOL data store itself is there. And we're actually deploying uh, VCLS virtual machines to it as well um, via the workload domain management, or excuse me, via the workload uh, deployment process. Um, again, skipping ahead, our workload domain has now been completely built. Um, and if we look on the summary of it, we can see that the storage type is indeed VVOLs. Um, going back, we can see that we, right now we only have a single array controller registered. So if you install the pure storage vSphere plugin, um, which I've done here, there's multiple ways to do that that are covered in other articles. Um, but if we give our underlying array name, the management virtual IP address, and then pure user, pure user um, to add it, we can then go ahead and register storage provider um, against our workload domain vCenter instance, give it that pure vVols username that we created earlier on in the video, um, register it. And again, this is important because it actually adds the second controller IP address as a storage provider, which you know is important for failover type scenarios. Um, but with that, our workload domain is complete. Uh, VVOLS is the backing storage, and we are ready to put some workloads on it. Um, stay tuned for a lot more demo videos to come on this, and thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it.